Bishop Nicholas Duncan Williams. Let us make welcome to the pulpit today the message and the messenger all the way from Nigeria, Apostle Joshua Selman. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just just a moment. I I'm really honored being here. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you very much. Whilst, whilst we're all standing, I, I want us to together help me. Um, let me just say a word or two before we do the acknowledgement. I want you to help me truly celebrate a man whose life and ministry, especially in the area of prayer and the area of intercession, has literally, literally transformed the lives of millions of people in Africa and across the globe. Please help me honor His Eminence, the Archbishop Duncan Williams. And his lovely wife. God bless you, sir. Bless you. Bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then, by way of extension, let me honor the entire council of bishops and all who are part of this great vision. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm honored to be here and I believe with all my heart that within the time that we we'll have, our lives will never, never, never be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So I'm going to request that we pray in one minute. This is a house of prayer. You are a people of prayer. And so, just for a minute or two, we are going to pray and decree and declare even over the meeting and then we'll be seated. Is that fine? Please lift your voice in one minute and ask the Lord for an encounter tonight. Ask the Lord for a visitation. Please pray. Everywhere, inside and outside, the overflows. Pray. Following online. Grant us grace tonight. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Shout a loud amen in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, by the way, please allow me honor and appreciate the so many people who are outside of this auditorium. I understand and I, I, I did see um, quite an overflow outside and then so many other people standing. Let's give them a big God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you. Please be seated. Let me request that you please lend me your attention within the few minutes that we have. I believe with all my heart that if you pay attention to the truths that you are about to hear, they have a way of lifting us all to higher 
and greater dimensions in the spirit. Hallelujah. Habakkuk said, I will set myself upon the tower. I will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower so that I will see what the Lord will say unto me. Hallelujah. One time Jesus was teaching in the Bible. And the Bible tells us that there were two women who represent, broadly speaking, the kinds of people who will find in an atmosphere like this. One was called Martha, the other was called Mary. And the Bible says how that Martha was up and down trying to make things happen, legitimately so. And Mary sat at the feet of Jesus and he looked at Martha and here's what he said. Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. He said, one thing is needful and this Mary has chosen to sit at the master's feet hallelujah moments like these are moments of encounter and it is important that you pay attention avoid distractions let your heart be open to receive are we together Yeshua. light the Bible declares that the entrance of your word gives light and even understanding unto the simple and so we submit to you who is the wisdom of God teach us show us the ways of the Spirit tonight and in the name of Jesus I pray that we will rise to heights unimagined in Jesus name I pray now please listen by way of introduction there are five things. Is it all right to move around? Thank you. There, there are five, five things that validate that a meeting was ordained of God. If these five things do not happen in a meeting, then God did not show up in that meeting. And I want you to learn this, number one. In every meeting ordained of God, there must be encounters. Number one, there must be encounters. Please write it down. Job 42 and verse 5, Job was speaking and he said, I have heard of thee with the hearing of the ear. But he says, now my eyes see thee. An encounter is the name given to a spiritual experience that creates conviction. That means you come into oneness with that thought to a point where you no longer sustain the ability to doubt that reality again. Encounters. We thrive in this kingdom on the strength of our convictions. And convictions are products of encounters. Please say after me, encounter. This is very important. Every meeting that is ordained of God must be a platform for encounters. So that we do not stop at the realm of theory, a theoretical spiritual understanding that we are able to come into the experience of the things that we believe. Hallelujah. Are we together? Number two, the second thing that must happen in an atmosphere such as this to validate that God is in the midst of his people and even moving across this place, this nation, this region is that there must be transformation, number two. Transformation is the name given to the process that makes you become like Christ in experience. 
the ability to become like Christ in experience through sound communication, sound exegesis of doctrine is how believers metamorphose. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 17. It says, now the Lord is that spirit. There are many spirits, but the Lord is that spirit. And it says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The next verse says, but we all. So this is an experience for all, not some. We all, with faces unveiled, it says, we behold him as in a mirror. We are changed from one dimension of glory to the other, even as by the spirit of God. Transformation. Are we learning already? Yes, this is very important. Romans chapter 12, when you read from verse 1 and 2, it says, I beseech thee, brethren, he's speaking to brethren now, by the mercies of God, that he offer your bodies a living sacrifice unto God. He calls it holy and acceptable. And then he calls it your reasonable act of service. Verse 2 says, do not be conformed to this world. Comes from the Greek word aeon, the thinking pattern that is associated with this age. He says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may be able to prove that good perfect will of God transformation and it comes through a sound exegesis of doctrine you see when the Word of God is communicated backed up by the anointing of the Holy Spirit it sustains the ability to correct perceptions it sustains the ability to correct mindsets are we together now yes a house like this and a conference like this should be a feast of light. John 1, 5, he says, And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. It takes light, spiritual illumination, to the point that Paul, when he was mentoring the church in Colossae, chapter 1, Colossians and verse 9, he prayed crying to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ that the church would access three dimensions of knowledge. Number one, the fullness. They be filled with the fullness, the knowledge of his will. Number two, they be filled with all wisdom. Wisdom is dimensional and that they be filled with all wisdom. Number three, they be filled with spiritual understanding the major challenge for most believers is ignorance philippians ephesians 4 and verse 18 the bible says having their understanding darkened it says being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart so an encounter with the word like this is an opportunity to feast on the light of god are we together now Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 when you read it says my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge not the knowledge of what they want the knowledge of the keys that it takes to translate prophecy into experience are you learning now thank you please do pay attention and understand this it is important you must you must make up your mind that you will evolve spiritually to a superior version of yourself that is now able to handle the things of the kingdom with power the bible says in psalm 82 and verse 5 it says they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course the next verse says i have said ye are gods and all of you not some are children of the most high but the tragedy is in the next verse it says you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes so we must obtain grace from god when he was speaking in the book of acts he says i commend you to god and to the word of his grace i hand you over to god then to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and then he says to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Say light. Light is very powerful in this kingdom because we rise on the strength of the level and the extent of spiritual illumination that we have. It takes more than a sincere desire to excel in this kingdom. Are we together? Dominion is not an impartation. Dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom.
Hallelujah. This is very important. Light. Psalm 60 and verse 1 says, Arise, it says, Shine, for thy light is come. Isaiah 60, I meant to say, Isaiah 60 and verse 1. Arise, it says, Shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Amplified says, Arise from the prostration and depression and prostration that circumstances have kept you. He says, Rise to a new light. Arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. Listen, transformation is very important. The Bible says, an heir, for as long as he's a child, he differeth not from a slave. That means his experience will still be like one who is not in the faith. So number one, encounters. Number two, transformation. The third thing we must, you, you won't believe that I'm just introducing myself. Hallelujah. Please don't be distracted. The third thing that we must experience in an atmosphere like this is that in every gathering that is God ordained, there must be an opportunity for the Holy Spirit to find expression in the midst of his people in miracles, signs, and wonders. This is true. John chapter 2 and verse 11. The first miracle recorded according to the synoptic account of John, the turning of water to wine. The Bible says, this beginning of miracles, that means he did not stop there. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in the Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory. Why? To the end that the disciples would believe on him. The faith life that we've been called into is a dimension of spiritual reality that can be provable can be proven here and now the bible says jesus is the same yesterday today and forever and the reality of his power his grace and his love must find expression in the midst of his people here and now i believe in the supernatural I believe in the miraculous. I believe in the power of God. Number four, very quickly. The fourth thing to expect in an atmosphere like this is impartation. What is impartation? Impartation is a mystery in the Bible. The system for transferring spiritual possibilities from one person and one region to another is called impartation Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 8 that every time God invests grace upon one person is to the intent that it reaches a people that he sent a word to Jacob but the intention is that it will light upon Israel in Romans chapter 1 when you read from verse 10 and 11 he was saying he made a statement that was very instructive Romans chapter 1 in fact when you start from verse 9 Romans, it says, For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayer. And then he says, Making request, if by any means now at length I may have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come to you. Why? 11. For I long to see you, he says, that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established it takes more than the salvation experience to be a witness indeed you must be empowered by the spirit is that true acts chapter 1 and verse 8 says but ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you he never said you will be preachers he never said you will be businessmen he never said you will be politicians those things just define the geography of your assignment. In the mind of God, we are all together called witnesses. A witness is the validator of a claim. Are we together? You will be witnesses to me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. And this is not limited to just a group of people. Acts chapter 2, when you read verse 39, I believe, it says this promise. Acts chapter 2, I believe it should be. The promise is unto you, say unto me, and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord shall call. 
and the faith very quickly what should you expect in an atmosphere like this number one encounters two transformation three miracle signs and wonders four impartation and number five fellowship there is a mystery that happens when believers come together under a corporate anointing psalm 133 how good and pleasant it is the bible says when brethren dwell in unity it now likens it to the oil verse 2 that flows upon the head of Aaron the priest to his bed to his garment and then verse 3 the Bible says even like the dew of Hammon for there in that gathering God had commanded the blessing that means no matter how anointed and great you are there are things you cannot receive in isolation there are dimensions of God that can only be experienced when we come together. Are we together now? And so tonight, having this at the back of your mind, I want to take the few minutes that I have to share something that I believe. Number one, it's been a burden in my heart. And I believe that this is consistent with the cry of the Spirit as revealed to his eminence the archbishop i want to share something that is is a very deep mystery in the spirit and i pray in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god that our eyes will be open to see and to access this light hallelujah when it comes to this kind of gathering ladies and gentlemen please listen carefully you will need more than intellectual prowess to understand the things of the spirit in isaiah i believe 29 and verse 11 let me show you a mystery and then we'll begin our teaching can you see it projected it says the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed not closed sealed so the book can be opened and yet it is sealed it says listen which men deliver to him that is learned educated saying read this i pray thee and he said i cannot why not because it is not open it is sealed next verse and the book is delivered to him that is not learned and he said i cannot even read this because i am not learned so there is a realm where both the learned and the unlearned would have to depend on the rabbi the wisdom of god for illumination are we blessed tonight yes the things of the spirit are beyond the realm of science and sociology these are realities that may not make sense to the natural and the carnal man but these are mysteries that empower us to rise even in light hmm. let me begin my teaching now Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. Jeremiah chapter 6. Silaski parando siata. Shaliparakato siata. Nibrondo shileparu siata. Listen, I want you to be very sensitive as I teach because. I sense a very strong anointing and one of the things that I sense the Holy Spirit doing listen carefully one of the things that I sense the Holy Spirit doing as I'm teaching now is is like an initiation he's drawing people into a realm where you encounter the spirit of revelation hallelujah just help those under the anointing as we teach hallelujah now Please don't be distracted with all of this. The manifestations will happen, but just pay attention to what I'm saying. So as the Holy Spirit speaks to me, then I will communicate that word, but we'll continue our teaching. Praise the Lord. I'm seeing a vision now, and I'm seeing the number 24. And the Spirit of God is telling me that there is grace coming on 24 people. Just sit down. Right now, the power of God is coming on them. 24 is a manifestation of grace. The spirit of revelation. I stretch my hands and I declare by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic in the name that is above all names, I decree and I declare, let there be the opening of that gate. 
upon these ones step into that realm and drink of this ancient fountain in the name of Jesus Christ please sit down the opening of the eyes Jinas kabadi kataliata, grantes kade badi da kataya, berando shegete pakata, skati parikate andas kate bakatos, krido sidata, rise in the spirit to a new height and a new dimension, rise in the spirit. Please sit if you can. Please sit if you can. Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. Let's trust God for grace to do something tonight. Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, he says, And ask for the old paths, Wherein is a good way. He says, And walk therein, And ye shall find rest for your souls i'm teaching tonight on spiritual patterns spiritual patterns please pay attention now listen very carefully god is a god of patterns the first revelation of this reality is in genesis chapter 4 Please give us Genesis chapter 4, the first seven verses. This was an encounter with the sons of Adam and Eve. It says, and Adam knew his wife, and she conceived. Please bring for me two people, two ladies now that will shout loud under the anointing to the hearing of everyone. Loud under the anointing by the Spirit of God. Who is like him, lion and the lamb, seated on the throne? Mountains bow down, every ocean roll to the Lord of lords. We will praise Adonai. From the rising of the sun to the end of every day, praise Adonai. The Lord is telling that lady that I'm rolling away the reproach. I'm rolling away the reproach. Listen to me. God is rolling away that reproach. And in the name of Jesus Christ, even under this grace, I stand by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic and I declare that everything that has tied you hitherto that will not let you go under the influence of the grace of his eminence we decree and declare it drops down right now it drops down right now in the name of Jesus Christ please sit down we're looking at Genesis chapter 4 so Adam knew his wife and conceived. She bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Please sit if you can. Verse 2. The Bible says she also bore Abel and that Cain was a tiller of the ground. 3. And in the process of time, follow carefully. The Bible says Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel brought of the firstling of his flock, and the Lord had respect unto his offering. Five. But Cain, and unto him and his offering, the Bible says that God did not have respect, and Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. Here is the lesson. The Lord said unto Cain, 
why art thou wrought? And why is thy countenance fallen? Verse 7. If thou doest well. That means if you offer that sacrifice according to the prescribed pattern. Would it not be accepted? But now that you have not done well, you will be frustrated and sin. All kinds of sin. Bitterness, jealousy, frustration. Are we together now? So God is a God of patterns. Let me define a spiritual pattern for you. A pattern is a prescribed methodology. A pattern is a modus operandi. A system of operation that guarantees predictability. Listen carefully now. A pattern is a prescribed or authorized methodology. A pattern also means the correct way things are done. So God is not just the God of the universe. He is the God of patterns. Patterns are pathways that guarantee predictable results. Results that can be reproduced again and again and again. And listen to me. We want to contend, especially in this conference, for realms and dimensions in the spirit where we will evolve from spiritual amateurism and get into mastery. And the Bible, Paul speaking, says, he that strives for mastery, he says he is not crowned except he strives lawfully according to patterns. Now listen, in the dealings of God with men, we are not at liberty to invent our strategy for knowing him and accessing spiritual realities. There is already a predefined pathway. Our assignment is not creativity. Our assignment is discernment and obedience. Are we together now? It is when it now has to do with spiritual legislature in the cosmos. That is when we need creativity. But as far as it has to do with dealing with God, creativity is not a requirement. You need discernment and then to obtain the grace to walk in keeping with the terms that guarantee the results. If you are with me, please say amen. amen. So, we have a lot of believers. Here is the dilemma. We have a lot of believers who are sincere, born again. They've encountered God as far as the salvation experience is concerned. But they are never able to evolve to a point where they become efficient in their Christian experience. And the missing link is they do not understand the spiritual patterns that guarantee the manifestation of the glory. Now, this is a very important word. The word glory has many expressions in the Bible. But two of them are very important for our discussion tonight. It comes from the Hebrew word kabod. The Greek is doxa. The root expression of glory means the essence and the weightiness of a person or a thing. Are we together now? So when you say the glory of God, please look up. Let me have your attention. When you say the glory of God, it's an attempt to describe everything that makes God, God. You would have to break the dimensions of God into various components to understand his glory. His goodness is a subset of his glory. His mercy, his favor. These are all dimensions that make up the glory of God. Now please look up. Every need of the believer, every need of the believer is captured in one expression. The desire to see your life become an effulgence of the glory of God indeed. Are we together now? The Bible says that we are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. Jesus teaching in his mentorship session that we call theologically speaking the Beatitudes, helping them to be accustomed to the ways of the kingdom. And he said, you are the light of the world akin to a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. It says, neither do men light a lamp and put it under a lampstand, but they put it on top of the lampstand and it gives light to all who are in the room. Then he says, let your light, permit that light to so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father. So God wants to be glorified in the life of the believer. Are we together now? 
John chapter 15 and verse 8, Jesus was still teaching and he said, Herein is our Father glorified. That means this is how God is glorified. When ye bear much fruit, say results. One more time, shout it, say results. That means when your life commands the results that represent God in truth, you bring glory to the name of the Lord. Then you get to a point where Galatians 1 and verse 22, 24 becomes a reality in your life. And they glorified God in me. God desires to be glorified in and through my life. That means through the dexterity and the excellency of my pursuit of God, my Christian experience, my conformity to the image and the character of the Christ, and then my... my my comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom by the time i am able to use these truths to produce results it brings glory to the name of the lord my assignment tonight is that by this revelation to push you out of the realm of spiritual barrenness to a level where your life begins to glorify christ in experience are we together so generally speaking when you command results in any area, listen carefully, that means the glory of God has manifested in that area. And every time you see the glory of God manifest, it is proof that his patterns have been kept. The patterns of God forerun his glory. Please pay attention. The patterns of God forerun his glory. You will never see the glory of God manifest in a life, in a church, in a region in a nation until and unless his patterns are kept failure to adhere to divine patterns is why so many believers continue to wallow and grow in darkness well-meaning well-intentioned people but whose life are never able to reveal the fullness of the beauty and the glory of God. Walk with me. Exodus 25 verse 9. This was the building of the tabernacle in the wilderness. I want us to understand the construct of this because the Bible says the things that are written aforetime, it says they are for our learning so that we to the patience and comfort of scripture might find hope. It says according, God is giving Moses the blueprint if you want to build a tabernacle that will host my glory, then you have to subscribe to the dimensions that I will give you. You're not going to build what you want arbitrarily and then allow me to come and stay there. No. Now, oh dear, I wish I had the time. Listen, generally speaking, this is not just a principle um, in the kingdom. It is a spiritual principle. Every time you want to transfer a spirit from its current place to any other place, there is a protocol. You will have to reproduce the atmosphere where that spirit is currently in so that when it translocates to another place, it will not even feel any difference. Let me explain to you what I mean. People use this in sorcery and witchcraft and all of that. When someone goes to meet a herbalist or a sorcerer wanting to conjure a spirit and transfer that spirit to another region, the herbalist has sustained the spiritual intelligence to replicate the atmosphere where that spirit is. And by divination, he's able to replicate that atmosphere. The moment the spirit finds an atmosphere that is a replica of where it is, it can live there and come to that region. Are we together? Do you know that that was the exact same thing God did with your heart for the Holy Spirit to be comfortable dwelling in you? So that whether the Holy Spirit is in heaven or he's in the heart of the believer, it is the same. Because the sacrifice of Christ had prepared that atmosphere for the Spirit to be able to dwell. Now listen, if this is true for salvation, that means if you can reproduce the pattern that attracts restoration, you will see it manifest. 
if you can reproduce the pattern that attracts wealth and prosperity in the kingdom you can reproduce it if if you can reproduce the pattern that attracts the anointing any dimension of it you will find it manifest my assignment now is to teach you exodus 25 verse 9 according to all that i showed thee listen carefully after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof even so shall ye make it go to verse 40 he's giving moses this instruction now 25 verse 40 40 40 he says and look he's warning him again that thou make them after their pattern that means the tabernacle in the wilderness was not just an act of creativity it was a download of something that was already existing in heaven and he says if it is my glory that you want to see there you have to use my patterns exodus chapter 40 and verse 16 let's hurry up exodus 40 and verse 16 thus did moses how according to all that the lord commanded him so did he now go to verse 33 and you'll see something that will surprise you now do you know that while they were building the entire tabernacle god kept watching and his glory never came until the last peg was hit according to pattern the bible says and he read up he's finishing the construction now he read up the court round about the tabernacle and the altar and set up the hanging of the court and the gate please read the last sentence with me if you're a christian ready one to read so moses finished the work he finished according to pattern next verse then only after the pattern was kept now a cloud covered the tent of the congregation and the glory of the lord filled the tabernacle next verse and moses was not even able to enter into the tent of the congregation why because the cloud abode thereon and the glory of the lord filled the tabernacle if it happened for the tabernacle it can happen for your life it can happen for your finances it can happen for your children there is a pattern for salvation how do we know that you are saved by checking what pattern you followed are we together now the only way we know you are saved is if you can tell me what spiritual pattern can you imagine that there are about 2.6 billion professing christians on earth today and we call ourselves believers why because all of us without fail subscribe to the same pattern what is the pattern allocated for salvation romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 12 for instance that if you want to encounter jesus as savior this is the spiritual pattern that brings that dimension of god to you are we, are we together now that the word is nigh thee in thy mouth and in thy heart the word of faith that we preach verse 9 if you will confess with your mouth the lord jesus christ and believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead the bible says thou shalt be saved so that is the manifestation of god's glory tied to that pattern verse 10 for with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation that means if you tell me you are saved i have no right to doubt your salvation but i'm going to ask you what happened to you if i see that you do not honor the pattern you are not saved it's as simple as that are we together there is a pattern for spiritual growth you can't tell me you are growing i will check the pattern if i see what pattern you are keeping listen i came from where the beautiful hotel where we were kept to this place did you know that there is an exact road from where i'm lodged to this place is that true and that anybody who follows that road will arrive at action chapel here am i right on that so 
if you tell me you are coming to action chapel it does not matter where you are my assignment is to show you the road that leads you to the church if i call you and you say you are going opposite it i can tell you without being prophetic that you will not get there by the spiritual intelligence of your violating certain patterns i can predict the outcome there is a pattern for spiritual growth the ministry of prayer the ministry of the word the ministry of mentorship that provides a sound exegesis of doctrine the course curriculum that builds the believer to be matured in christ is called doctrine comes from the latin word doctrina it means a predefined body of truth that makes an individual to become something exact doctrine listen 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 there is a pattern for building your faith if you tell me I want to build my faith all I need to do is introduce you to the pattern allocated for building your faith here's how the Bible puts it it says faith cometh so faith is alive it can come before it comes it means it's not there it can come there can come a time you can say I have faith faith cometh how does it come number one the hearing that produces awareness and the hearing that produces understanding it comes by two kinds of hearing number one the hearing that produces awareness then number two the hearing that produces understanding there is a pattern for accessing the anointing if you desire the anointing there is an exact spiritual pattern here's how the Bible puts it I have found David my servant hold on hold on hold on don't assume you know the scripture he found David a long time, but it took many other years to find his servant in David. I found David, but the dealings that transformed David to become my servant, the anointing is on my servant. I have found Joshua Selman, but it can take 20 years to find my servant. But when I find my servant, then he's ready for my holy oil. The oil is not for David. The oil is for my servant. And the condition, listen, you want to access the anointing for instance, the price is death. The anointing is not a gift. The anointing is a reward. Are we together now? There is a pattern for activating favor, for instance. Favor as cheap as it sounds, it's not arbitrary there is a pattern proverbs 13 15 is the spiritual pattern for activating favor good understanding the bible says gives birth like a mother into a child the name of the child is favor and it says transgression is also like a mother it gives birth to a child the name of the child is hardship transgression means a violation of patterns Are we together? There is a pattern for building a church like this. Magnificent assembly, magnificent people having influence over people like this. It does not just happen. There is a spiritual pattern. What is the pattern? And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men, not to the man of God, to myself. There is a pattern for building and maintaining relationships. The Bible says, he that desires friends must first show himself friendly. There is a pattern for influence. When you want to rise to a level of influence, there is a spiritual pattern you must subscribe to. You find that in the life of Joseph. You find that in the life of Esther combining these two personalities you find the key for influence as diligence and favor for joseph it was diligence not just the ability to interpret dreams 
No, that was not what gave him nobility and honor. It was the ability to provide solutions. He said, let the king seek for a man and this and that and that and that and the king searched and immediately he was promoted. For Esther, we see that the secret for her lifting was found in chapter 2 of Esther, the B part of 15 and then verse 17. The Bible says, and Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. Go to verse 7. It says she obtained favor also. The Bible says the king loved Esther verse 17 2 verse 17 the king loved esther more than all the virgins and he set a royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of vashti so when you come to me and you say man of god i desire influence i will expose you to the grace that makes for competence and the grace that makes for favor you have found the key for influence now listen to me when I came here yesterday, I had the honor and the privilege of going around this magnificent facility. And then uh, part of the tour was your, your, your clinic, very beautiful clinic. And I met a few of your doctors and with, 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 with the mastery of a professional, they began to discuss certain seeming complicated issues. And I could see how cheap they were discussing it. And I said, that's my message competence listen when you meet a doctor the doctor does not tell you opinions he has spent six seven eight maybe ten years learning patterns that's all he went to school for that means if you tell the doctor i have a runny stomach i have headaches beyond the frailty of your words he's searching for patterns it is from the patterns he can say this is wrong with you sometimes he may have to draw your blood but the, the, the recommendation he gives you happens only when he can get the pattern. So he went to school and professors and intellectuals taught him the connection between sicknesses and patterns. That there are diseases that function in similar ways. Is that true? When the COVID-19 broke out and all of that you know we began to labor so much investing millions and billions of dollars searching for patterns because it is from the patterns that vaccines can be developed am i right on that and every time there are variations another study comes say patterns very important if i can see what is wrong with your christian experience today the only way i will help you is by checking what spiritual pattern you are violating and to open up light to you if it is lack of finances i can tell you with with the mastery of a surgeon that this might be what you are doing wrong if it's that your spiritual life is taunted and you are not growing then i know what you might be doing wrong because the moment you ignore the priesthood ministry of prayer and you ignore the ministry of the word when you ignore the ministry of corporate gathering and fellowship you do not submit yourself to doctrine like acts chapter 2 and verse 42 says it says that they submitted themselves to the doctrine acts chapter 2 and 42 the doctrine of the apostles and of breaking of bread and of fellowship prayers these are the patterns they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine fellowship breaking of bread, prayer, and they became a mighty army. So if something is wrong with your spiritual life, listen, if you put the stand and that attract his glory you only succeed in the kingdom when you build according to pattern if you do not build according to pattern you may never truly succeed in the kingdom the Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, Matthew chapter 7, from verse 24, we'll find somewhere to pray. 
Matthew chapter 7 and verse 24. It says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon the key expression is not the house, it is upon the rock. Hmm. 25. The rain descended, the Bible says, and the winds blew upon that house and it fell not. Why? It was not because it was a building. It was the pattern that it was built upon. The house was founded upon a rock. 26. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man. What is his foolishness? He built. So the architecture is not the mistake. It is the pattern. He built upon sand. 27. The same thing that happened to the man on the rock happened to this same man. No difference. But the Bible says it fell and great was the fall of it you want to see a revival and the move of God in Accra Ghana as a contribution to what God is doing across the globe we must become like spiritual archaeologists the secret to the future is in the past to find out what patterns were kept by the patriarchs what did they keep what made God to do business with them in such a mighty way I had the honor and the privilege of visiting the prayer mountain that God is building for himself even through the hand of his eminence and I was awestruck by the, the magnificent demonstration of the power and the grace of God. When I saw that right there, I said, Ghana, this is it. You have found something very ancient. Listen to me. It is true. Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. When Jesus walked upon the earth, you would think everything would just work for him because he was Jesus. No, he was our pattern man. So, he submitted himself to everything to show us the blueprint on how to emerge and to be able to serve the purposes of God with efficiency. I hope you know that Jesus was born the Word. And even though he was born the Word, nothing happened in his life because he had to submit to the various patterns. Pattern number one, he was taken to the temple and he met two strange people. One called Anna the prophetess and Simeon the prophet. Those people who stood as a twofold cord, they spoke and blessed him. Jesus, the word. Why would the word need anybody to bless him? But that is a spiritual protocol. And then at age 12, when his contemporaries were running up and down, he was in his father's house learning and sitting under mentorship. It was on the strength of what he had learned that he challenged Satan when he came. Now watch this. For 18 years from age 12, the Bible does not tell us anything again about Jesus. The next time he shows up, he's a 30-year-old man coming to be baptized by this mysterious prophet who is called John. John was not a Baptist. John was a prophet. Baptism was a strategy to help him identify the Christ. Because while he was in the wilderness with locusts and wild honey, certain revelations were given to him that every time you baptize, look up. Whoever you see the heavens open over. You see that now? Listen. 
So, John would baptize and look up, you can go. John would baptize and look up, you can go. Suddenly, this 30-year-old gentleman stands before him and John prophetically says, Behold the Lamb that takes away the sins of the world. Listen carefully. And John now says, With respect to what I have seen, I am not worthy to untie even the latchet of your shoes. Here is a lesson for all of us. Jesus said, suffer it to be so. In other words, this is an ordinance. It's a pattern. You are the leading voice. Can you imagine that Jesus as the word of God walked under a closed heaven for 30 years? As the word. As the word, his own heavens were closed. It took John. The Bible says, when John baptized him, as he came out of the water, your Bible says his heavens were open. And God spoke and said, this is my beloved son. My question is, what was he before? My beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Now listen. There was a verdict from that encounter. And then the encounter the transfiguration. He said, hear ye him. That was not just a statement to those who were listening. He was telling creation that this code has been hit correctly. That means anywhere he goes within that territory, let the sea, the waters, all the elements should cooperate with him. Because the father had made a verdict. Hear ye him. On account of that verdict, he went to the mountain and men came. He went to the sea and men came. Everywhere he went, because there was a command, hear ye him. Hear me. Thou businessman, where is the voice that said, hear ye him? Otherwise, just because you have a mall does not mean Ghana will hear you. No. Pattern. There is a spiritual pattern that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So when Jesus came, you would think that the Father being almighty would just use a verdict. As powerful as God is, he did not cast sin out of man. As mighty as God is, able to do everything, you would think he would just cast sin out of man. He submitted himself to the patterns that make for his substitutionary sacrifice. Can I tell you this? Those that God will use in this end time before he returns will be men and women who through the labor of the word and the spirit would have submitted themselves to high level spiritual intelligence to understand the handwriting on the walls. The patterns, the patterns that lead to predictable spiritual outcome. There is a pattern that keeps a territory open for the purposes of God. The Bible lets us know that that pattern is the priesthood ministry of spiritual legislature through prayer and intercession. You see that happen. That any territory that does not subscribe to the ministry of prayer and intercession cannot keep the heavens over that territory open. In the days of Daniel, the spirits of the Medes and the Persians were manipulating men to succumb to counsels that were anti-God. But there was one man who happened to also be in the parliament and he understood this priesthood ministry and single-handedly kept the heavens over Babylon open. Listen. When the devil wanted to afflict them, they scanned and found out that there was only one thing they needed to do. Find a way of using political power to stop that pattern of prayer for only 30 days. Satan does not need one year, only 30 days of a compromise to that pattern and it's enough for him to take not just a family, a region. That means when the devil attacks your destiny, he does not attack you by attacking you. He attacks the grace upon you to walk in keeping with patterns. 
This is how the devil destroys men. He does not attack you by attacking you. He attacks you by destroying you so that you lose sight of or you lose the discipline to walk in keeping with spiritual patterns. Let me tell you this. For as long as you find the patterns allocated for exact spiritual outcomes and you keep them, your life will be invincible. You will marvel and wonder at the predictability of your results. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you now? Listen to me. Many of you have come here. Some of you are pastors of assemblies. Some of you are business people. Some of you are captains of industry, politicians, members of parliament. Listen to what I'm telling you. For every spiritual outcome that you desire, is called an impact conference you don't just advance because of desire it takes more than desire it takes your submission to spiritual patterns i found this in my life and i said this is it the ministry of the word and the spirit opening me up to the various spiritual patterns that are responsible for bringing certain outcomes. Please listen to what I'm teaching you tonight. For many of you here, the mantle for the next apostolic and prophetic move over Ghana and the entire sub-Saharan Africa, you are really part of that army, but not this version of you. This version of you cannot do anything much. The, the plethora of ignorance, the devil will hit you once. You surround yourself with patterns, mysteries like chariots. This is how you become mighty with God. And Jesus himself knew what to do. Now here's the question as we attempt to pray. If the devil afflicts your children now, do you know what to do? Not, not random guessing spiritual things. Look up. This is what happens to us believers because of the high level of ignorance and lack of mastery and i said it not not as a communication of sarcasm just help those under the anointing listen did you know that the average believer does not know what dimension of light and pattern leads to whatever outcome so for instance if i find out now that i'm being oppressed by demon spirits chances are that i will pray a prayer like this the blood of Jesus, Holy Ghost fire, a seed, touching and agreeing. I don't even know which one leads to what result. I just random guess any one of them. And the danger is that one will walk. And because you do not know which one led to which one, there is no mastery in your spiritual experience. Are we together now? So, we do not know that the various dimensions of results and possibilities in the kingdom have spiritual patterns allocated to them. Not, this is a beautiful auditorium with many rooms. Am I right on that? Do you agree with me that every room has a key that opens it? Now, you can hold a bunch of keys on your hands. You are holding keys. They are all called keys. But you can't just use anyone for any door. No. There are doors that you may need to swipe a card, not insert a key. That is the protocol for opening the door. You violate it, a tiny key can keep you outside for a whole day. A key that you put in your pocket, and yet that key has the power to keep you outside. You can cry as anointed as you are, you still remain outside. The door will not respond to tears, it will respond to the key. There is a pattern that when you find, there will never be delay in your life again. It's not just a prophetic word. It is true. The Bible says, and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, and Elijah ran on bare foot and overtook the chariots of Ahab even down to Jezreel. What is that mystery that can accelerate men? Have you found it? Do you know it? Can you teach your children? The proof of mastery is that you can teach without ambiguity. Anything you cannot explain, you have not gained mastery over. 
Many years ago, I had a vision. I would close with this night. I had a vision. Please listen carefully. And in that vision, I saw a giant door. Looked like an ancient door. Very ancient door. And I was zoomed into that vision. And I found out that that door had many smaller doors. You know how um, the post office used to be? I don't know how, you, you know those small boxes that make up beautiful. And it was opening and closing in the vision. Every small door that opens, light will come out of it and then it will close. Open again. And I noticed that on all of the smaller doors, on every small door, there was one scripture written. And that was when the Holy Ghost taught me the relationship between the anointing and the word. Listen carefully. That for every revelation you truly catch as a revelation, there is a grace component represented by that light that enters you. It empowers you to validate that truth you claim to know. That means any truth you claim to have found without the grace component to validate its reality is not yet life in you. The church is full of, respectfully speaking, I don't mean this to be sarcastic, but the church is full of empty bragging. We talk about so many things we cannot defend. Oh, God is here. God can heal the sick. God can raise the dead. We say those things. Now, when it is time to make it happen, we quietly share the grace and go away. That's why you should thank God for platforms like this. Listen, the Christian experience was never supposed to be heard alone. It was supposed to be heard and seen. Acts chapter 8 from verse 5. Acts chapter 8 from verse 5. Philip went down to Samaria, the Bible says, and he preached Christ unto them. Verse 6. Read with me, please, if you're a Christian. Ready? One, two, read. It says, and the people with one accord gave heed to those things which Philip spake. Uh -huh. Hearing and... One more time. Hearing and... You don't just hear alone. You hear and see when God is at work. Hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. What were the miracles? Next verse 7. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many who were possessed. And many who were taken with palsy that were lame were healed. Verse 8. And there was great joy in that city. A time came in my life where I was frustrated with the religiosity of church, not from a sarcastic standpoint. I read my Bible. I read books that were written by men and women. Listen carefully. And every time I went to church, respectfully speaking, I had a lot of spiritual propositions about what God could do. I had songs by the worship teams. They sang songs about his power. They sang songs about his grace. They sang songs about revival. They sang songs about the Holy Spirit. And yet I watch sick people in that meeting go back sick. I watch oppressed people go back oppressed. I watch people who were sincere and well-meaning, buffeted by Satan left, right, and center. And I said, something has got to be wrong. Let God be true. And all men liars. Now listen to me. I began a pursuit that had no plan B of return. I said I would have to find out what was the secret that the ancient knew. What did our fathers find? What business did they do with God that gave them authority over nations? Men who spoke like God upon the earth. They commanded dimensions of power. Read the Bible. They called Paul and Barnabas, Zeus and Hermes. These were Greek gods. That these men, when you read their archives in Hebrews 11, it says, time will fail me to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. Men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions.
and I was watching a generation that was losing something very ancient and powerful and I knew that if we are to see his kingdom come again over nations over territories the world is tired of our talk the world is tired of our stories the world is tired of our excuses hear me as darkness looms across the horizon of Africa Europe America all across Romans chapter 8 from verse 8 and 9 18 and 19 now becomes a reality it says for I reckon 8 verse 18 and 19 I reckon it says that the sufferings the constraints that you're training the sufferings of this present time he said they are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us 19 says the endless expectation of the creator he says it waited for the manifestation not the explanation of the sons of God listen to me the Bible says behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us that we be called the sons of God it says now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be like the church has almost looked like a nuisance to civilization there are nations and territories today that see the church as an interruption to civilization but there is a generation that is saying no more no more no more no more that a people will arise by the spirit and the fire of God this was my hunger Akragana it drove me to search for God days became weeks weeks became months and I said if I did not find him I would rather die there is a desperation the bible says through desire proverbs 18 1 a man having separated himself seeketh and intermeddled with all knowledge listen there is the law of encounter you never encounter god until all of you cries for all of him this casual lukewarm careless christianity here and there that sees god as an option to just be added that can be done without you will never find God that way Jeremiah 29 and verse 13 says and you shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart that means if you search and you do not find him dear prayer warrior dear prospective apostle and prophet the diagnosis is that all of you is not seeking him I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. And through my life, this is my song. Be lifted forever. just five minutes and we're done one night I was lying down flat on the ground crying before his majesty I was not looking for fame I was not looking for money I was not looking for ministry I was not looking for titles I was not looking for his hand I wanted his heart and his face Therein lies the mistake of our pursuit. If you're a co-laborer and a servant of God here, let me beseech you by the mercy of God. If your pursuit is just for power or fame or titles, you have missed it from the beginning. Even if you do a hundred days fasting, the corruption of the state of your heart will veto your spiritual experience. You will not find God. It takes a pursuit that is sincere. And that night... While I lay down there, a stranger 
walked into my room. There he stepped in, the one whom my heart longed for, the one who I could live and die for, the one who preachers spoke about and yet do not know him. When he walked, Jesus, he was no longer a memory verse. He was no longer a song upon the lips of a skilled singer. Listen to me. The day I saw Jesus Christ, I knew that many people do not know him. I know today people claim they see Jesus. It's not for me to judge them, but believe me, if you see the Jesus I saw, it will take you more than one year to be back to yourself. Are we learning something? When he... How he entered my room, I do not know. How the door opened, how he got in there, I cannot explain. And now I'm lying down and I'm looking at the ancient of days. Not an angel. Ah. The longing of my heart. Ministry personified. I could gaze on any part of him forever and not be tired. Believe me when I tell you that. It's not like men that you look at my shoe after one minute, you're tired, you want to look at something else. Any part of him. It was when I encountered Jesus that I knew that you do not have to talk to speak. No. He was communicating with me, yet his mouth was not opening. Jesus. Majesty. Your majesty. Your grace has found me just as I am. Empty handed, but alive in your hand. Your majesty, majesty, forever I am changed by your love, in the presence of your majesty, the hallmark of the experience was when his majesty stretched his right hand towards me listen let me attempt to describe it for you before we pray imagine taking the sun and putting it inside an ant that was what happened how i survived it is what i will ask him the day i see his face again that light at his brilliance how that light entered into me i cannot begin to explain Listen carefully. From that encounter, by the next time I opened my Bible, there was a straight line from Genesis to Revelation. Things I did not study. What is the meaning of this? From whence cometh this illumination? Elihu said, There is a spirit in man, and that the breath of the Shobadagata, the breath of the Almighty is able to make men of understanding and in one other encounter that i had with him he now said my son from this day i give you my presence as a gift and then i'm seeing this angel standing before me and he said this angel will walk with you i said what is his name and he said he's called the angel of the Lord's presence. This is why you see and hear these manifestations. I explain this thing to you so you don't confuse what we are doing with superstition. No. Hear me. Please, whatever you do, do not miss tomorrow. If you will call the whole of Ghana to come here, if there's no space, sit on the roof. Hear me because we may not have time tonight 
But let me tell you this. He left me with an instruction. And he said, to every nation and every territory that I will send you to, that light that came from you to me, there must be someone in that meeting that that light must be transferred to them. This is why you see some of these manifestations. Tonight we may not have the time to pray for the sick and to speak. Tomorrow I'll have the time to tell you how I got into the prophetic. But learn this tonight. Midwifing your desire and your experience are spiritual patterns. Prayer is a spiritual pattern. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray. Not men who are doing well or men who are not doing well. Men. God never prayed. But when he became a man, he prayed. And since he went back to heaven as a man, he's still praying. All men pray. They don't pray because things are bad. It is a pattern allocated to authorize heaven. Hear me. Scattered in this auditorium are men and women. I have had the honor and the privilege of meeting a few of these veterans of the gospel before they went to be with the Lord. All in such, I wanted to hear this transference of mantles. What were they told? What heritage do we have to preserve? So that we become faithful stewards of this grace. For the Bible says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Ghana, this conference is more than a conference. I have come in the spirit of Gideon to sound the shofar. And the Bible says that when Gideon sounded that alarm, 32,000 people heeded the alarm and they came. Because there is the prophetic birthing of something God is doing in Ghana. I can tell you this by the Spirit. Ghana, hear me. A season is coming to an end and a new season is opening up. It is a Kairos moment in the Spirit. I tell you this as touching the visions of the Spirit. There will be an emergence. It will start from your campuses. It will start from non-denominational prayer groups. God will begin to raise ordinary men and women. Ministries that have no name. They will just pray and pray until they evolve into the prophetic counsel of God. The spirit of revival. And the move of God will move across your parliament, move across schools, educated and uneducated, all together because a season is coming to an end. The Bible says, and the sons of Isaac, who had an understanding of the time, you must learn how to read the writings of the world. Therefore, I come by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic. I sound that shofar over Ghana. Arise in the name that is above all names. I speak to the spiritual climate by the privilege of access to this altar. In the name that is above all names, we open up the vistas by the Spirit. We sound the alarm upon the holy mountain. Maranatha, come revival. Maranatha, come the grace for prayer. Maranatha, come the move of God. Maranatha, come men of fire. The Boras, arise. Elijah's, arise. Samson's, arise. In the name of Jesus Christ. In one minute, I want you to begin to pray in the spirit as we wrap up. Kabandas katabakata, shanikatebete. Embrake those koto shalata. 
where are the men who watch upon the wall stand upon your watch where your priestly regalia give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem just one minute and we're done go ahead Paris where are the men and the women who know how to hold on to the horns of the altar Ghana I speak to you a season is ending and another is beginning lift up your eyes and lift up your heads your salvation draw it near Hallelujah. Listen to me. I want to plead if His Eminence will grant me that opportunity so that tomorrow will be a miracle and impartation service tonight where we will trust God to stir up ancient wells and ancient fountains. But for tonight, my head is exalted like the horn of a unicorn. I am anointed with fresh oil. My head you have exalted like the horn of a unicorn. I am The impartation you are receiving tonight is the spirit of prayer and supplication. Something will mantle you tonight. At the count of three, I want to release that grace and we wrap up. My God and His Majesty, the one I serve, I pray over men and women, young and old, across the length and breadth of Ghana, the overflows following online in the name that is above all names. I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood in the name of Jesus and in honor to the grace upon his imminence I decree and declare Ghana at the count of three I want you to shout the name Jesus and let this mantle cloak you the grace to travel until you shift climate are you ready now one two three shout Jesus take that grace Take that grace, take that mantle, take that grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray in the morning, pray in the afternoon, pray in the night. Let his light on behalf of his majesty until kingdom come. 